Hello, who am I talking to? Hi, where can I learn more about Yanis? Hi there. You can learn more about Yanis Moore on his social media channels. He is active on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. He shares insights about automation and educates his community there. That's awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If Nice. So the past two months have been an immense learning curve for me, especially regarding AI and voice. And now, one month after my video on how to create an AI voice agent using Synthflow, many, many other YouTubers saw the same potential in voice AI and started creating videos as well. So while they have been busy understanding Synthflow, I've had the pleasure to deep dive into other tools that are still pretty much unknown. And this video is your ticket into a tool that I discovered during my research. It is called Bocode and it is essentially an open source framework that you can use to build custom voice AI agents on top of it without taking the route through an additional provider like Synthflow. This allows you to have phone calls for less than two cents per minute while being able to completely customize everything without limits. While Vocode aims at developers, I will show you how you can make it without writing any lines of code and without any knowledge about coding whatsoever and of course with as little cost as possible. Vocode also offers a hosted solution in case you do not want to host the backend yourself but I found it very limiting in the set of features they offer through the API. To make everything work we need a couple of SaaS tools. So in case you don't have an account with them already, please go ahead and create one. Number one is going to be OpenAI API. So OpenAI is basically the LLM we are going to use on which our AI agent is powered. The second tool we are going to use is called DeepGram and it is used to convert text to speech and speech to text. Number three is called Render, which is the platform on which we host our very own AI agent. In our case, we are going to use a free plan so you can too. Number four is GitHub so that you can manage and extend your AI agent. And lastly, we are going to use Twilio as our phone number provider so that we are actually able to call our AI agent as you have seen in the beginning. So with that said, let's get right into it. The first thing you need to do is creating a GitHub account. Once you did that and you're logged in, you can head over to my AI voice agent template that I created for you. This one basically contains everything you need to create that agent without writing a single line of code, which is in fact a template that I kind of created before and try to use to create my own assistant with, which also contains transcript, which also contains an integration with 11 labs in case you want to use it. In this example, we are not going to use it to just reduce the amount of tools we need. But obviously, if you want to use custom voices, you can do that as well. And lastly, I packaged all of that in a Docker container so that we can simply deploy it with render.com. If nothing of that, what I just said makes sense to you, don't worry. All you need to do is follow me along on the screen. I make the things super simple so that you can even install it with little technical knowledge. Once you're logged into your GitHub account, all you need to do is head over to my AI voice agent Voco template. You will find the link for that within our resource hub. So simply head over there, create an account if you don't have to. It's completely free and you can get access to all of the templates and everything I'm going to show you in this video and in all my previous and upcoming videos. Once you're logged in and you are at our or at my repository, you need to head to the fork button right here and fork the template into your very own account. Since I'm the owner of this template or of this repository, I cannot do that, but you will definitely be able to do that. It's also free. So you simply click on fork, you fork the template. It's inside of your account and once you did that you simply go ahead and copy that url in case you already have tons of repositories if not you probably don't need to worry about that because for now you basically set up everything inside of github the next step you need to do is head over and create an account on render.com render is basically a infrastructure provider for servers so that we can basically deploy our chatbot somewhere on a server somewhere in the world so that basically just allows us to actually communicate with it through the internet and we can actually access it from wherever and to do that all you need to do is once you created your account you head to the new button up here you go to web service and you select build and deploy from a github repository now if it's your first time all you need to do is you need to click next and then authenticate your github account if you haven't done that yet you can do that only with the repository you want or with all of them this is really up to you i would always suggest to just select the repository you want render to have access to for security reasons once you've done that you simply click on next and you will see a list of repositories once you're here you simply locate the AI voice agent vocal template, which in my case is that one. And all we are going to do is click on connect, which basically brings you to the next page where we can configure that whole template. Mine basically adds it with a dash one as I already have one deployed and I'm simply going to show you how you can set it up on render. And then I will show you how it looks like if you have it live. So the name basically, it's not really relevant in our case. You can simply set it to whatever you want. I would always just leave it standard. The region is a bit more interesting because it kind of like depends on where you want to host that AI agent. I would always suggest to choose something that is closest to you or closest 
closest to the customers you're going to serve. In my case, I'm simply going to use Frankfurt because it's anyways, I'm not going to set it up. But if you, let's say, are from the US, you can use uh, Ohio or Oregon. Or if you're from Asia, it's probably better to use the one in Singapore. And once you've done that, you simply go down, you leave the branch as it is. You don't need to change anything on the root directory. And you also don't need to change anything for the runtime. All of that is basically pre-selected and preset by render in a way that it will work. So you literally can ignore all of that. And if you are like me and you just want to test the bot stuff, you can simply select the free plan as we don't need to actively have it um, available. What I mean by that is that the free version basically always spins down after a time of inactivity. So in case no one is using the service, it will automatically spin down. And then when you try to access it, you need to wait a while until everything is booted up again, which in that case can take a couple of minutes. Once you've selected the free plan, you can scroll down and you will see the last part where we take care of. And this is the environment variables. And to fill out that one, we need a little bit of time. Cause the first thing you need to do is head over back to the GitHub template that you just forked. You scroll down until you see the readme file right here and you look at point five, which is the environment variables. So in case you don't want to follow the video, you can also simply go through the manual and basically set up that stuff there. But for us, since I'm going to explain it to you, I'm simply going to start with the environment variables. And the first one is obviously to set up and connect OpenAI. So all you do is you simply copy the OpenAI API key environment variable, you add it here and you would add your OpenAI key here. You will find it by heading over to OpenAI, you log into your dashboard, you go to the API key tab and you copy the API key. So that is literally one of the simplest steps. Then we head back into our GitHub template and we are continuing with the, let's say, DeepGram API key. I'm just going to do it like that because it's easier for me to set up and better for you to understand and follow along. So DeepGram is basically the tool, like I mentioned, that we are going to use for speech to text and from text to speech within our call for streaming. And all we're going to do is we head back to render, we click on add environment variable, we add it here and we would add our DeepGram API key here. DeepGram is that platform. All you need to do is create an account or sign into yours. We have $200 worth of credits in the beginning. That is more than enough for you to test the bot for a while, for a long time. And you will definitely also get access to an API key that you then simply copy and paste right within this field. After that, we are going to head back into here and we are setting up Twilio. So in case you haven't created a Twilio account yet, please go ahead and do that. And within the account dashboard, you will find Twilio account SID and the Twilio account token. So you would basically simply add two environment variables here. First this one and then the one for the out token and you would add both of them right within here. So I basically have done that already with my other server. So I'm just using demo data right here. And there is not much more to that as of now except of the transcript callback URL, which I think is like the most important one in case you actually want to develop a bot with that, that makes a lot of sense and that you can use in real world examples. Cause this callback URL is used whenever someone calls or interacts with your AI agent, we basically take the transcript and send it to the web URL so that you can access it from wherever, right? So in my example, I basically did that before in the test that you saw earlier, I basically just asked that and it basically sends it to a URL. So this site is called webhook.site, which allows you to test those kind of webhook endpoints. So in case you would set up something like webhook to site for testing, all you would need to do is you click at environment variable, you add the transcripts underscore callback URL, you go to webhook to site and you copy the webhook URL that you will see right here. So this is basically the one we can send the information to. So we copy it and we will paste it here, which means that every time someone calls and finishes a call, the information or the transcript will be sent to this webhook URL, which then looks something like this in the example that I created for you. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm just keeping that for now to keep the tutorial as slim as possible. If you want to read something about it, I definitely suggest to look into the repository. Everything is documented there. But for now, let's just continue with the setup because once you have done that, all you need to do is you need to click on create web service, which is what then deploys the service on a server so that you can use it live. So I have already done that for you. So I'm simply heading over quickly to the server that I set up. So once within the server that you created, it looks something like this and you will see within the events, the deployment, which basically means that your chatbot has been deployed from the repository inside of GitHub. And if that works, which should out of the box, you should be able to use the chatbot right away. Not right away, but nearly right away because there's one more thing we need to do. And that is basically connecting the Twilio phone number to our AI agent. Agent. So to do that, the first thing you need to do is you need to head over to Twilio. Once you are inside of Twilio, you would need to purchase a phone number. To do that, you simply go to phone number, manage active numbers, and you buy a number, or you simply click the button up here. I think it's also available in the main page. And once you have an active number, it will look something like this, as you can see here. And in my case, we basically need to set up this inbound call URL. This is basically what you need to set up to make that whole thing work. Before I'm going to do that, I also want to mention that in case you have a trial account with Twilio, I suggest to upgrade to an actual 
paid one or to a real account because the trial account has sometimes some issue with voice calling. I've tried it before, it didn't work all the time or it was a little bit buggy. So definitely try to just set up an account that is already out of the trial. That will definitely help you in the sense of testing the chatbot. The number price depends on what number you choose, but I would say it's usually between one or two dollars. So once you have your number here, all you do is you click on it, you wait until the page loads, you scroll down here and you look for the voice configuration. And this is basically where you can see a call comes in. It's set to Webhook and it sets a URL with the HTTP type, the request type post. So you want to set this part up nearly the exact same. The only difference is that you basically have to copy the URL of your deployed server and on render. So once you set up your server and render successfully and it's deployed, you will also see a URL right here. All you do is you copy that to the clipboard, you head into Twilio and you add that URL right in here. And at the very end, you add a slash and write inbound underscore call. This is literally all you need to do after you can simply save the active phone number and you are ready to go. This is really all you need to do to set up that phone agent. And this is one that is completely custom hosted on a server on render that is not controlled by anyone like Synthflow. So you can scale it up the way you need it. And the best part of it is you can even extend it to whatever functionality you need. This also includes custom actions. It includes the whole settings, literally the whole package. If you now want to test the AI agent, you can simply use the number that you created and call it. And you will then be able to see if it works inside of render in the logs if by clicking here. And within the logs, you will be able to see the whole transcript or basically like everything that happens, right? So if I scroll up here a little bit, you will be able to see stuff like this, where it says, that's awesome. Thank you very much. That's basically what I said in the beginning of the example or in my first phone call that you saw in the very beginning of the video. And this is literally, so you can look through everything here. You can also check after the phone call if the webhook was sent properly to webhook.site and if you see everything. So now since you have set up the chatbot, you might think yourself, but Yanis, I'm not a developer. How can I make it work? And the answer? is simple. It's called outsourcing. The easiest way of getting it done is by hiring a Python expert, either on Upwork, which is my preferred source, or on Fiverr. And to make the process as smooth as possible for you, I've created for you an example job description that you can use on Upwork. And you literally can just copy and paste the thing to find a developer that specifically fits your needs. You will find the job description with all the other details and everything else I showed you in this video inside of our resource hub. So simply head over there. The link for that is down below in the description and you can just get started with the whole thing. I have used the same process for one of my projects and the developer managed to finalize the project in less than one week. This one job led me to 175 applicants, which gave me more than enough options to choose from. This is specifically regarding the developers I found on Upwork. And once you hire a developer, you can simply get him access to the GitHub repository that I created or that you forked earlier. So to get your developer access to your GitHub repository that you forked from my template, all you need to do is head over to it. You go to settings, you go to collaborators and you add the collaborator right within there. This allows the developer to commit their very own changes so that you can simply look over what he did and communicate with him in case you want any changes. Or obviously you're not happy with his quality of code, which I hope will not happen if you are using the prompt that I provided to you within our resource hub. With that information, you now gain access to another neat platform of building completely custom voice AI solutions. And those are mostly cheaper than all of the other providers that I'm going to show you in a future videos. And not only that, but you will also have full control over them. So it's definitely worth looking into. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel in case you find this information helpful. As you are one of the few that made it to the very end, I'm gonna share a little secret with you there are a lot of more exciting AI tools on the market that haven't really been recognized. I'm going to change that in the next video, so definitely follow. Until then, have a good one and see you next time.